Good afternoon to you. Welcome to the Farm Kenya Show. And I'm Nokip Kimboy. Today we have a great show for you, trust me. Because we are talking matters to do with making agricultural profitable. But to add to that is how to properly equip you uh, in regards to that journey empowering you to make your agricultural uh, endeavor profitable so we talk about technology how can you utilize technology in the spaces that you are in to turn those things that we see as disadvantages into advantages and then infuse that into our agricultural journey because overall the bigger issue is touching on food security in the country the country is not food secure so how can you utilize matters to do technology to turn the tide around and make sure that young people are getting excited with this technology and innovation? And in the meantime, we have that triple effect where we are embracing agriculture as a business that is one which contributes to matters to do with food security in the country. So the show is quite heavy today and we're going to have heavy heavy panel today we'll start with matters demonstration in regards to uh innovation in the agricultural ecosystem because tech is an important aspect of this journey that we'll have and also talk to people who are in the valley chain how are they important uh talk about seedlings i mean some of us go into agriculture but we make very very simple mistakes that could make things actually not work out for us so how can you avoid Avoid those simple mistakes to make sure that uh, we are running profitable. Once again, I'm Nokip Kumbo and we have a great show for you. But for starters, let's take a look at some of the news from the agricultural world. Now, a week after President William Ruto actually uh, talked to farmers and uh, directed that farmers who had fallen victims to the fake fertilizer scam be issued with genuine input, a section of farmers drawn from the North Rift region now want the Minister of Agriculture to fast track the compensation process this came as leaders from the northern and western region demanded action from the government as elvis koske now reports On March 5th, Robert Kiprop walked into the National Cereals Produce Board Depot in Eldoret to get his share of subsidized fertilizer. And after paying for 50 bags each of 50 kilograms of the inputs as the planting season kicked off, to his shock, he discovered late last month that all the planting fertilizer branded as Kel Green was a mixture of crushed stones and animal waste. Miko na Resiti. Niko na mbole nye ni hizi mnaziona hapa mbole ambayo mukiziona ni kama matope ukishika hivi ni ni matope tu hii mawe kwa ro ro inaitwa nini hii inaitwa nini natural ya ngombe hii ro kaudang na imaongeza hizi ni mawe za teraso hii nye kundi nye kundi ni mawe teraso hata hii nye upe sijui ni nini since the beginning of this month kiprop has been visiting ncpb depo but all his efforts to get compensated has proven futile. He now wants the Ministry of Agriculture to fast track the process since President William Ruto had issued a directive. The head of state amesema tupewe mbolewa tupewe. Mbaka sasa was there the other day when I ambia bado. Bado tunaungoja instructions kutoka above. Tuno, which is which above? This came as leaders drawn from the north and western region demanded for the Ministry of Agriculture to move its speed and intervene. President has come out on record that those people who perpetrated this and this act of immorality and ethical practice in business should be taken into action 
and proper and absolute law. Hawa ni wale watu ambaye wanataka kuharibu wakulima wa inji. Na tunaomba ya kwamba wale watu ambaye wanafanya jambo ambaye haikubaliki katika inji, tunaombea Mungu wale watu waweze kutolewa. On Monday while speaking in the county of West Pokot, President William Ruto directed that farmers who had fallen victim to the fake fertilizer be issued with genuine input. Elvis Kosgei, KT News, Wasingishu County. Now, sugarcane farmers in Karisho County have urged actually the senators to reject specific provisions within the sugarcane bill 2020, which is set for debate in the Senate chambers. Speaking in Kipsi Waiting Sigowet, uh, actually, constituency, the farmers lamented that the bill, which included recommendations from various tax force and uh, stakeholders, have been altered by the assembly. They particularly actually highlighted concerns about zoning pricing and the composition of the sugar directorate additionally they actually uh, criticized the sugarcane pricing and uh, committee for its role in causing a significant decline in the price of sugarcane citing a drop from 6800 shillings to around 5100 shillings per ton Our contestation is in section 19 of that sugar bill 2022 where it is proposing very punitive uh, measures to uh, uh, to the farmer to the extent that farmers will be only aligned or required by law to supply particular millers why are we crying this 99% of the millers that we now have in operation in this country are private mills. History has shown us before that private investors are businessmen who are not keen on investing in the farmers. Uh, the farmers at the ground are not happy because of the question of zoning, that the farmers at the ground are not happy because of the dropping prices of sugarcane per tonnage, that the farmers at the ground are not also happy because of the introduction of the items. Jimsi Watu Ambao Wameongea earlier before than me have equally said that our farmers have basic education. And when we introduce issues like items in the preparation of taxes, they are ready to pay taxes. But asking a farmer, to go lock in into their KRA portal, produce an item for them to be paid for the deliveries that they have made in, 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 in the factories will be a problem. Right now, let's head to Muranga, where in a bid to support farmers in Muranga County, the county government has launched the Mkulima Initiative, actually providing farmers with cards they can use to purchase animal feed and household necessities. During the launch in Kahuru Sub County, Kiharu County, uh, the Muranga Governor Irungu Kangata encouraged milk farmers to establish cooperatives. These cooperatives will enable farmers to benefit from funds provided by the government. We want to increase our support to milk farmers, particularly the small scale milk farmer. Before we used to send some support to them, but uh, we realized that uh, the small scale farmer was not getting adequate support. So we have come up with an exercise to increase the benefits that's cost to the farmer. Uh, so that we'll give them a card, they'll be able to pay for their school fees, pay for farm inputs, 
and also get food stuff and also use that SIM card to pay for hospital fees. There are rumors that uh, we are correcting farmers' details so that we can forward the information to KRA. Uh, I want to confirm to farmers that uh, as, as Moranga County government, we are not going to share the data of Moranga milk farmers to KRA because one, we object the Moranga farmers, milk farmers, to be taxed. Number two, we also want to add the government that farmers, the milk farmers in Moranga, requires their support. They do not require to be taxed more. Right, and finally, kitchen gardening has changed the lifestyle of many pastoralists, uh, empowering them financially as they engage in planting numerous vegetables, both for commercial and also home consumption. Kitchen gardening in the region has now turned and reduced malnutrition among children under five years of age, lactating women and breastfeeding women as well as actually turning the ties in regards to them making money from selling their crops. If I am a Jamaican trader, sana, jinsi unavyoona tumepanda at least kuna mboga, mtu kuna ndizi yako, umepanda matunda mbili tatu. Hivi haya maji yametusaidia sana. Wakati ambapo tulikuwa tunaenda kuchota maji mbali, hatukuwa tunaweza kupanda vitu kama haya. Lakini sasa ukiangalia nimeweza nikapanda mboga at least by the end of the day, ile tu ndibobu nilikuwa ninunue nayo mboga nitakuwa nime safe. Mba wa mama wetu hapa sasa na hata vijana wanaweza kufanya uh, irrigation ili waweze kupata chakula, wapate mboga ya kukula hawa wenyewe ili kuimprove nutrition na pia ya kuweza kuuza ili waweze kupata uh, manufaa na tumeona kwamba maji ambayo imepatikana hapa ni maji mengi sana uh, 30000 cubic inapatikana uh, in um, in one hour indeed uh, the innovation right there to make sure that uh, first of all we are changing what our perception in regards to farming especially amongst pastoralists now they say we can settle down and plant something but how do we enable them to be able to effectively do that and it's providing water are we able to provide water adequate water for them to do so and some of these initiatives actually do require technology cooperation and that's why today on set we have uh, mr arif Ketter, who's the managing director Agri-Green Agri -Green Consulting. Thank you very much, sir, for making time to speak to us. Um, first of all, you know, when you talk about food business and even the Kenyan food uh, ecosystem, uh, you've been in the country for quite a while uh, to be able to, uh, to see all these transitions, even as government after government talks about, you know, food security as being top of the agenda but uh, for starters just give us a brief background uh, for you and agricultural system in kenya okay mm -hmm. i came <clears throat> i came to kenya in uh, 2007 which means i'm 18 years now in kenya and uh, <clears throat> when i came i saw that uh, the situation I, I worked in other countries i worked in brazil and i worked in zambia and in tanzania i grew so when i came to kenya i saw that people here uh, different in many aspects, very smart people, hardworking people, God-fearing people, but the, they are not uh, succeeding in agriculture. Mm. And I asked myself why. My answer to myself, first of all, was because they are lacking the three pillars of success, the knowledge, the do-how, and the high-quality inputs. So in the company I worked at that time, I was the uh, deputy managing di director and then uh, vice president for that group called Balton for All Africa. Uh, I took the innovation that uh, I developed and uh, with the support of uh, all my team mm -hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> and developed what we call the farmer kit. And it was uh, bringing the knowledge together with the implementation of the knowledge, coaching the farmer, do how and high quality inputs. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kenya, since then, the transform was very, very significant. 
because that time people did not uh, use uh, hybrid seeds, yes. which is very key. They did not use drip irrigation. They did not use many things. Uh, for my activities, also I got in, uh, in, uh, from Society of International Development, I got a recognition award for changing lives in developing nations because it did a big change because many entrepreneurs, mainly young people, uh, took the, uh, the farmer kit and to, to, took it to different levels and uh, developed it and uh, really the, it, it changed lives of, of uh, let's say millions of people in Kenya and Africa. All right. And, um, and uh, later on we, we came to the conclusion we, we see. The problem I see in Kenya and mainly in youth many times that people like to cut corners. Mm. They like, the, they have to do one thing. They said, ah, why should I invest in design? Let me do it myself. And then the z design is failing and and they don't uh, succeed uh, in the farming, which is a challenge and, and it costs them at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. But there are also technical things. So that was something that uh, I had, I'm proud to say, part of the of the contribution for change with okay. many other organizations, of course. All right. But uh, definitely the footprint uh, is there, the small greenhouses for the farmers, the open field uh, drip irrigation on gravity, mm -hmm. the kitchen gardens that we started in uh, schools and different places. Uh, of course, a lot with the government that uh, throughout the years, okay. different governments, not, not one. Definitely. And uh, one of the things that uh, um, I've recognized is that... Um, the issue of small-scale farmers is very critical. Uh, there is a high probability, a huge percentage of food that we eat uh, in Kenya is coming from a smallholder farmer. Now, looking at this issue of information gap, yeah, and um, the technical know-how on how to execute and now quality input, talk to me about how much stride have we made in regards to reaching to this uh, smallholder farmers in this country? First of all, again, from 2007 to today, I must confirm and, and say that a, a very, very big step was taken forward. It's not there yet. There is a lot to improve still, mm -hmm. but a lot of uh, advanced was there because farmers today understand better that they need to... Uh, to prepare the soil properly, they need the the, the agricultural practices have improved, mm -hmm. but some pl some farmers, mainly in the remote places, may, mainly grassroots farmers, are really suffering. For that, we our company uh, actually, it's it's an international company that uh, we took, but working also in different places, Kenya, Rwanda, uh, we developed a system called uh, a platform, a platform called Sova. In that platform. It's designed and t taking all the experience of the 17 years working with the small scale farmers and uh, tackling whole villages, bringing their technologies uh, that are, are in a center and the farmers are dealing uh, in their own farms, being trained in their own farms. All uh, disadvantages that I saw or, or challenges that we met in projects that I've done with the Kenya Red Cross and with the other organization, International Trade uh, Center and many other organizations that were successful projects, but the challenge was sustainability. We took all the conclusions, all the, all the way how to improve it, mm -hmm. and we implemented it uh, with our partners in, it's called KFM, the company called K Kids for Millions, and the program is SOVA. SOVA is from the book of Joel chapter 2, verses 26, mm -hmm. that it's the opposite of hunger. Mm -hmm. So SOVA means the st full stomach. Mm -hmm. So that pr uh, platform has different partners that are working with us, uh, and we are, we are progressing, and, uh, and, and we, are, we are there to do good things, okay. and success and, and change, significant change for tens of thousands of farmers mm -hmm. in a project for, for each... Um, for each project like this. All right. Uh, I, ideally, uh, when you talk about food security in the country, one of, because um, Kenya, we are a net importer of food, unfortunately. Uh, first of all, does that position uh, us at a disadvantage where if something happens globally, like we've seen in the recent past, um, prices of food going up. So uh, turning, turning that tide around, um, 
is it tackling the small scale farmers some of the solutions you've mentioned and uh should we what timelines are we working with here first of all to your question yes definitely uh, we are doing today projects out of kenya in different uh, countries mm -hmm. some islands some other things around in africa and we are seeing that uh, during the covid when they had uh, challenges of uh, bringing importing food or, or people visiting they had to they had to address the issue and now they're addressing what they could have addressed before that because of the lack of uh, knowledge and the way to implement so we are doing it there mm -hmm. it doesn't skip any country including kenya so kenya the knowledge is uh, compared to other neighboring country i believe it's higher it's higher compared to other neighboring countries in africa still it should be much much uh, improved and uh, the technologies that we are looking at should be uh, sh these technologies could assist mm -hmm. uh, if you want i can uh, show one technology that i've brought here mm -hmm. and explain mm -hmm. one one of the challenges I'll, I'll give an example a specific example and uh, it's relevant to every uh, to everyone that is dealing with farmer at least to know even if he doesn't need it in his farm mm -hmm. One of the challenges is that uh, uh, when you have a, a plot mm -hmm. and you dig for you look for water, let's say Kajiado, let's say say uh, Tokana, let's say Northeast and some other places, Walda, Wajir, Damajale, wherever. When when you are uh, looking for water, many times you find water, but the water is saline. When the water is saline, you are not in a position to use that water because it, it's uh, toxic to the crops. Mm -hmm. Very few crops can withstand this uh, salinity. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, you have to select, to do the right uh, selection of the water and to, to check it in the lab to see what is the level of salinity. But if you find the salinity is, uh, is uh, higher than what the crop can withstand, then uh, you can use the, the gadget. Uh, most big export farms are using reverse osmosis which is a nice system, but very, very, very costly mm -hmm. and needs maintenance uh, throughout the year. And, uh, and it's not affordable for, I'd say, 95% of the, of the farmers in, in the, or 90% of the farmers in the country. It's very expensive. Yes. The, the other gadget that I, I brought here to tackle, to tackle just one example of, uh, of the technologies that we are using when we are doing food security mm -hmm. projects. Okay. So, so Even before we go into the demonstration, because I think uh, it will be important for us to see that journey and the way you are scaling these technologies that are very, very important, but again, the cost element is putting out a lot of farmers. Um, I, I see you have a very simple setup here. Uh, I want us to go on a break. Mr. Arif, sure. then when we come back, uh, you will demonstrate to us how, if in my farm, uh, I, I, I'm around a place where we have saline water, I'm being forced either to buy water from a different place. Actually, I can turn this around with a very simple and uh, easy technology to install in my farm. So that we do after this short break right here on the farm. Can you sure remember, we are talking about changing the tides of agriculture in this country. And in this first part, we're tackling how we can utilize technology in different spaces, avenues to better and make it easier, especially for the smallholder farmer who is on a budget. How can we make it easier for them on matters input, on issues to do with the quality of water and whatnot. So we return with much more. Remember, as the farm can you show, continue f uh, sending your feedback across our social media platforms and we'll be sampling them later on uh, in the show. But for now, let's go for the break.
in a man way I fuck a di Fuck a di I do hell when I don't say I be pass up You already know, they call me Joe the Best, and Joe the Best always remain to be my name. Remember, guys, Saturdays is straight up show, and this Saturday, we're making your day. This is DJ Tatua, most valued DJ. If you think you're as smart as you claim, then you shouldn't be watching another man's gate like a dog. Eh? Huh? You know what they say about curiosity? It killed a cat. <laughs> well, I'm not a cat, you can tell me. Me and Madame were just talking about looking for extra help for you, but um, I'll talk to her about it. For a minute, that I'm going to sit here and let you kill Mom too. Bera, no, shut up. Monica, Monica. Broken, only on KTN Home. Ethan, mommy, mommy, Ethan. <laughs> From the depths of heartache to the heights of happiness, lives intertwine in ways you never imagined. That's how I look at it, being the mother of Jaime's children. Secrets are revealed, alliances are tested. It was your husband who killed my daughter! Mommy! Mommy! And true love faces its biggest challenges. You know what? This is your fault! I warned you! Love, betrayal, and endless suspense thrive in the world of soap operas at KTN Home. Tune in. I saw the killer bride. Y you mean the ghost? Gaye la tika ya la patrona, Gilda Sambendege. Mon ami Gaye. Palo vacapona, sonite bandi macapona, sonite moto. We charge in your current bouquet and get upgraded to the next high bouquet for one month. Download Star Times on app for unlimited entertainment. Anytime, anywhere. Star Times. Enjoy digital life.
All right, welcome back to the Farm Kenya show. And uh, we're discussing revamping our agricultural ecosystem, utilizing innovation uh, to make sure that our farmers are properly equipped. And today I have Mr. Arif Kedaros, the MD, AgriGreen uh, Consulting. And um, Mr. Arif, we were just demonstrating the aspect of sometimes one of the biggest hindrances is this issue of water. Because we live in an environment where we have very good soil, but when it comes to water, it's a little bit salty, not too good for the plant. So you're saying there is a solution for that, especially for the small uh, holder farmers? For medium and small, there mm-hmm. are different sizes. Okay. Uh, the, the solution is, uh, is from uh, Kedar Israel. Mm-hmm. It's a technological uh, system. Okay. And I, I'll explain it briefly All right. in a way that it's easy to understand. Mm-hmm. Okay, the, the system has three, three elements. Okay, one, the solar panel. So if you're in the field, a place that you don't have any, any possibility for electricity. Yes. A very small and simple solar panel, but very potent, mm-hmm. is, uh, is providing the energy. Okay. Then you have the brain. Mm-hmm. The brain. This is what what is uh, is uh, the important part for okay. taking the electricity, changing into electrical system, into electrical signal between uh, uh, two to uh, fifty eight kilohertz, mm-hmm. and then it turns all this to this pipe. Okay. This pipe is a is a pipe coated with inside. There is all the electrical technology that is needed that is affecting the water that is passing through it okay so basically this pipe is connected on this side okay. and on this side for the water that is coming all right you can see mm-hmm. that uh, let's say the water flow it doesn't matter the direction let's say it's, it flows from here you can see the electrical cables are, are connected okay when the water is coming something is happening to it okay if you you look at the water you don't see clu- nothing but once uh, you have saline water, yes. there are two elements that are in the water that is called salt. But salt is combined of, let's say, I'll give you an example, mm-hmm. of sodium and, uh, and uh, uh, chlorine, mm-hmm. okay? Like the chlorine that you are of jig. Yes. So these two are connected, sodium and chlorine are binded to each other mm. so in this way now when they, when they reach the plant okay if we take the plant you're okay. sitting with the let's, plant please let's have this mm-hmm. when they reach the plant mm-hmm. the plant takes and tries to uptake the water mm-hmm. and in the water there is the salt and then what you see is a, so, a plant that is suffering from salt not in this case mm-hmm. but you see the edges of the plant are becoming yellow and later on they become they become a brown because they try to evapotranspirate it, mm-hmm. but the plant doesn't succeed. Eventually, it can even die if the levels are high of salinity. Okay. okay? Uh-huh. So this is the salinity. Okay. Now, because of these two components, sodium and chlorine. Now, what these electrical uh, shocks are giving to the water, mm-hmm. they are separating. They are, they, they are causing the sodium to be separated from the chlorine. So you have two, two separate elements. Mm-hmm. So the water mm-hmm. that is flowing yes. is now coming at the other end, but the two elements are separated. Okay. Once they reach the soil, mm-hmm. they reach the plant, yeah. then the plant doesn't see anymore the big molecule of the salt. It sees sodium, it sees chlorine, the sodium is washed down with time, mm-hmm. the chlorine is either evaporating or washed as well faster than the sodium. Okay. And it's connecting mm-hmm. to... Uh, other elements chemically i don't want to go into it yes. but at the end of the day it's neutralizing it and the plant the leaves are developing without seeing the salt okay. this is the secret this is what it's done mm-hmm. and uh, when the plant is does not see the salt yes. it can develop and produce the fruit and and uh, do what it has to do mm-hmm. properly okay that's the that's the patent and it's uh, relatively low cost yes uh, relatively mm-hmm. because uh, it's uh, maybe 10 percent of what the uh, reverse osmosis will cost okay okay mm-hmm. uh, and, and and talking about this technology because 
I, I really like it's bazooka like, yeah. yeah very, it's, <laughs> it's bazooka like. So, it's uh, water. but it, yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so it goes in salt water, comes out the the components that make salty water are subdivided, and now the way the plant perceives that water is totally different as it would, would perceive, you know, yeah, uh, salty water. Perfect. Definitely. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, perfect. this this solution, uh, talking about the potential to change, turn the tides, especially in areas where we have salty water. I know in Turkana we are told we have an aquifer that can supply water for, uh, you know, uh, several, not only decades, almost over 200 years in this country, but the challenge is that issue of saltiness. So with such technology, how, what tides can they bring in the agricultural sector? I tell you, mm -hmm. you mentioned Tokana mm -hmm. about, uh, I don't know, it was not so far. It was 2018, two I think, or 2017, mm -hmm. that I was invited by the general secretary at the time of the Kenya Red Cross mm -hmm. to Tokana. He wanted to do in, a, in a Kakuma, a refugee camp, he said, let us do a place, a garden, a food garden to feed. The Kenya Red Cross are doing amazing things, very nice things, and he was an amazing person, and uh, he wanted to do the good things. Yes. Dr. Gulet, Abbas Gulet. And, uh, and uh, there we came, we said, great, excellent idea. We took the water sample, and then we saw that the water, the salinity is very high, mm. is very high. Mm -hmm. So the conclusion is, was at the end of the day, we tried to look different al alternatives. The bottom line, the project, I was not willing to do the project because I said I don't have a solution uh, at the time mm -hmm. because uh, the, any other solution would be extremely expensive, reverse osmosis or something, so okay. we, we gave up. Eventually, especially for vegetables, maybe some other crops like uh, like sorghum or something that is more withstanding salt can be done, but uh, but uh, different type of irrigation, but not vegetables. Okay. So, at the end of the day, uh, there were changes, and you couldn't do the project. There are other places in Tokana that the water is sweeter mm. that you can grow. Depends on the location. Each location has a different water. Sometimes in the same spot you can do dig deep. And there is a aquifer with the sweet water. Mm -hmm. You dig deeper, it's salty water, or the other way. It's, there's no rules that are standing clear. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. So it's a tricky thing. Mm -hmm. So so what? What? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So what we are looking at is um, is that according to the so the water test, yes, we can we can decide the 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 system. And now the system, another question that will come probably, according, if it's a very small scale farmer, mm -hmm. we have a device that is this size, very tiny device, okay. that uh, the cost is, uh, is lower, mm -hmm. and that uh, device enables to that farmer in one to three acre to grow. Okay. If it's, uh, this is for five acre, there are also for 50 acre to 80, uh, uh, no, it's not 50, 50 cubic meter per hour mm -hmm. that is passing through the, the pipe. So this is for big plots. Okay. So the de devices are according to the size of the plot. Uh -uh. But uh, so what's the cost of this one? This one, something like this, is about uh, uh, four four thousand dollars roughly. Okay. Uh, the system complete. This is uh, in dollars because the shilling dollar is uh, changing so so, <laughs> so badly, fast. So you, you cannot uh, no. Okay. So that will be around uh, half a million, just over half a million. Uh, uh, it, roughly, slightly yeah. less, less than half a million. Yeah, yeah. around half a million. Then but we have the smaller one. The uh. smaller one will be about uh, uh, $2,000, okay. which is uh, 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 260000 roughly. Today. Okay. Is, is it a uh, technology that uh, can be applied, especially if uh, I don't have that amount of capital? Is there an opportunity to pull resources? Uh, get one and um, sort of find a way of utilizing it amongst more farmers. Uh, very, look, today, today, this is another thing we, we can mm -hmm. sit again. Yeah, it's okay, no problem. Uh, today, mm -hmm. um, there are uh, a lot of organizations yes. that are operating in Kenya, very good uh, organizations that are supporting uh, the farmers and supporting the youth. And uh, they can support in getting getting such uh, funds, such loans. Even some uh, banks mm. can be uh, collaborative on giving some loans 
because this is something that uh, returns. It's it's a uh, it has a collateral, mm -hmm. which is not uh, it's not like a drip system that uh, with time will uh, can can be uh, strong demerge. This uh, this one yes. can hold uh, for 20 years, no problem. Okay, simple without any without any need for for any treatment. Okay. Uh, but but uh, <coughs> if I'm saying if I'm speaking about water utilization mm -hmm. and the water uh, and, and those organizations, some NGOs, some uh, international organizations, I don't want to mention names, but there are there are many many operating in Kenya for okay. the rural and for the youth mm -hmm. and for the environment. Yes. So so uh, environmentally friendly. This is also much more friendly than reverse osmosis that concentrates all the salts and then uh, you don't have where to dump them because it's unfriendly to the en environment. Okay. So when when uh, youth are organizing together and doing a plot together, and there are many cases okay. like this, they can they can do they can do such a thing, okay. and also they can utilize uh, they can consolidate together as a group and go to the next item that I would like to to mention. Yes, uh, taking uh, one of the challenges globally and in Kenya definitely is a challenge of uh, sewage sewage water that is wasted that is uh, bad for the environment that is unhealthy for for those reasons you have you have to take care and to see how uh, what what can be done today there are not much much solutions okay. what we are looking at is a solution that a group that will organize itself together okay. and uh, come with uh, with additional uh, uh, with a plan okay. they can get funds from those organizations because the next item is quite also quite amazing definitely and we want to take a look at this particular and next let's item. let's look at the item and see what it is the yes. system how to take sewage water mm -hmm. and turn it to water that can be used for irrigation for agriculture definitely go ahead roll the clip What we do here at Laguna Innovation is providing a green solution to treating and recycling wastewater to a point where the water can meet the standards for safe irrigation of food crops. Our system runs completely off of solar energy, as you can see here with the solar panels, so no connection to the electric grid is needed, meaning that the system is able to operate 24-7 in places where there is no existing infrastructure to provide either sewer grids or wastewater treatment facilities. The innovative aspects of our technology is that we can take a natural process of how algae and bacteria work in both aerobic and anaerobic environments in a natural lagoon, but our technology does what nature does through a compact and efficient process. We take the wastewater, we expose it to a biofilm, which includes algae and bacteria. We remove significantly the organic pollution, reducing the biological oxygen demand. We produce very little sludge by circulating the water and reducing the organic load through a process of mineralization. We at Laguna Innovation are dedicated to solving three of the world's most pressing challenges. Inadequate sanitation, environmental pollution, and the lack of water in agriculture. At Laguna Innovation, we address these problems in both a green and sustainable way. Briefly, even as we finish, Laguna Innovation, as you've rightly seen, uh, the potential for this in turning our waste water uh, into into something cleaner and can be utilized into technology. So far, how much uptake are we seeing? How much interest are we seeing in some of these technologies? Even as a close up, there is a lot of interest. There is a lot of this is more more the interest is more in schools, mm -hmm. uh, in remote places where the the infrastructure of the of the piping is not. Uh, is not the standard one that you you can find in, uh, in towns and cities and so on and uh, taking the water and having the advantage of that water being able to be recycled and used it again some schools in western kenya are closing because they don't have water uh, so if they had the, that water at least to do some gardening and some other solutions to to treat the water for having drinking water 
so they they could uh, keep on running but with imagine uh, maisha without the water you can't uh, you can't uh, you can't uh, live mm-hmm. and uh, and this is definitely in our era bringing agricultural water solutions mm-hmm. is the key for life okay bringing agricultural water solutions is the key for life yes um you're parting shot in less than than 30 seconds yeah you've been in the innovation game for a very long time uh you are still creating each and every single day uh, there's this notion in kenya we're told the average age of a farmer is almost six years in this country uh what do you think how do we bring young people in the whole value chain how do we bring more young people to get engaged in productivity of food in this country okay i'll say briefly yes it's a matter of education first of all mm. we have a program also for that called kilima kizazi kipia kilimo kizazi kipia next generation farmers for changing the mindset from the time they are in the primary schools not even in this in the high schools mm. but also high schools and that has to change and they have to see agriculture can be profitable like in Israel, you have many young agri- farmers. Uh, you, you have in Germany far- young farmers, in, in uh, Sweden, and in all over the world, you have young farmers. And then uh, if we are looking at, uh, at uh, them making money using technologies and not necessarily being uh, with uh, dirty clothes and, uh, and ragged, uh, rags, but, but can work. Mm-hmm. And still make money and have a nice car and and uh, and produce and feed others one thing is common for from uh, the president of any country to the cleaner of any any place that all and the chokora in the street everybody has to eat mm. everyone has to eat you me everybody yes and more people that will be engaged in agriculture they will make more money because less and less agriculturists are are coming okay so uh, small scale farmers if you gather them and and uh, do with them uh, more things you improve their livelihood but you improve their livelihood for the society mm. and definitely young entrepreneurs we are engaged in the programs uh, that uh, we we started the programs we is our our company started the programs bringing kenya youth mm-hmm. right now it's every year 300 youth from kenya coming uh, from kenya to israel trained in the arava valley trained and uh, learning mm-hmm. for 11 months 11 months not uh, two weeks not three 11 months they are graduates from universities coming coming back to kenya mm-hmm. engaged in in many agricultural activities changing this the concept of of, uh, of thinking mm-hmm. and that uh, thing was under agreement with the government of israel and the government of kenya with our engine behind it mm-hmm. with our uh, mind set of, uh, behind it okay. and uh, and this these uh, youngsters understand because they saw that agriculture can be something much more than the them there with the folk jembe breaking his back definitely and uh that's the actually the message that um the valley chain is wide you can plug in at the technology level at the production level when you talk about farming you can even come to the end at actually produce okay. selling level and the consumption level at the same time uh, but there is immense opportunities for young people but for now we have touched on technology uh, thank you very much mr yari for well, your you. input uh, this is a good engagement and um, that's the potential of technology in turning the tides in agriculture such a solution it's a solution that will transform areas that do have saline water and can't do much when it comes to agricultural apply this and you're solving that challenge so there's a call to the kenyan youth how much more can we innovate in the agricultural sector and uh, that's why farm kenya is here to inspire that hope that change that it is possible as rightly demonstrated here yarif keta is the md of agrigreen consulting uh, limited and he says that it is possible you don't have to break your back as a young person <laughs> you have just to look at the opportunities and those opportunities are right in front of your eyes with that we take a short break when you come back we talk to young people who are in this valley chain them they're saying proper seedling 
is also a key foundation to making it big in agriculture because with every tree it starts at a seedling level stay tuned Are you ready to make your mark in the world? To showcase your business, event, or special announcement in a way that grabs attention? Well, you can now rest easy with the Standard Group self-service platform, allowing you to book ad space in the Standard newspaper hassle-free. So say hello to your brand's visibility courtesy of Standard Ad Center, which is self-service friendly, easier, faster, and smarter. Book your ad in the Standard newspaper from the comfort of your home, office, or wherever you are. Because it really is as easy as visiting ads.standardmedia.co.ke forward slash ads to follow the prompts and make it count for your business. A product of Standard Group DLC. A twisted story of revenge that will steal your hearts. A daughter will bear the punishments for the sins of her mother. Vengeance is soon going to be mine. Their lives will be ruined and a daughter will bear the punishments. This is not a love story. It is a story of hearts broken by revenge. Oh, Jerry. So what? Broken faith. Only on KTN Home. Mr. Pitching, the kid on the of the art of living is here you will not believe who we have in stuff for you this season i usually buy during a sale but i'm also a very hard negotiator the homes are nothing short of magnificent exquisite and unique I think it just brings out that girlish era that I am in. This season, the bar is raised. Once I started floral, it just seemed to um, be themed all over. Take a vicarious journey with me and let's discover, explore and engage. I was always the cool kid because mm -hmm. I always had money. We had a farm yeah. at the river. Yeah. I would go get products, mm -hmm. sit by the roadside mm -hmm. and sell. And I realized the money is good because mm -hmm. it would make me the boss. And the small errands my mom would give me and small jobs, mm -hmm. I would pay my sisters to do it for me. Mm -hmm. So I quickly learned money and power mm -hmm. at a very um, young age. And until today, I still enjoy money and making power. money and having <laughs> <laughs> Learn how to honor your journey mm -hmm. by completing that journey, accepting where you are. Mm -hmm. Some patches are painful. Mm -hmm. Don't take shortcuts. Mm -hmm. Do what needs to be done at that point you are so that you can be promoted to the next phase mm -hmm. of your journey. Badai, I have a request to deliver food. Chakula? Where did you deliver? 
ama ni messenger yeah angalia ni huyu si bora kazi <laughs> njoro <laughs> ni eri ukue messenger badala kushinda hapa kama umesoma gazeti sasa hii ndio kazi hii yako ndio kazi msije ni kwa ni jokes tu nini wewe ni kwa ni jokes njoroge niko busy kama unataka kuongea na mimi wacha basi niongee na tina Sikusahau nilishikwa na polisi on the way. Potato potato. Nikishaongea na yeye, yeye ndio ataamua kama atakujia Stacy wakaishi na yeye Dubai. Msemo huu kazi unaniambia kwa wapi? My friend, unaishi msitu gani? Natal for you my friend. Ni kama oxygen iko ki la mahali. Make your go smarter with Airtel as we continuously expand our network countrywide. Enjoy 1.2 GB at 20 bob valid for 1 hour. Dial star 544 hash or use my Airtel app. Airtel, a reason to imagine. All right, welcome back to the Farm Kenya show. And um, this particular moment, we want to talk about, actually, since we're touching on young people, and uh, I, I'm honored. Today, we've swung both ways. We've had uh, Mr. Arif earlier on, and now we have the young people are doing things on the ground. Right now in studio, I'm joined by uh, the far end, uh, Victoria Slamek, who's the CEO of Mkulima Seedlings and Seed Pro East Africa, EA, and Lois Kabuti, who's also the co-founder of Mkulima Seedlings. Gentlemen, lady, good to see you guys. I'm happy you guys are young and you are changing the narrative when it comes to, you know, young people and agriculture. Uh, starting with you, Mr. Lamek, I mean, uh, going into the seedling world, is it something that you, you are interested in uh, from a very young age or is it something that you realize there is a need here I need to plug in? Uh, thank you so much mm. for this opportunity. Uh, going into the seedlings, was a solution that we were offering so it came out of a problem i had i needed some seedlings i couldn't get i had the money i couldn't get so where i got some seeds they were in very bad shape mm -hmm. so that one now uh, sh uh, showed me that there is an opportunity okay and i swung into action that's amazing you saw an opportunity and totally uh decided that uh I won't allow this to happen again. Yes, yes. Mkulima Seedlings is all mm -hmm. about a solution, mm -hmm. offering a solution mm -hmm. uh, to seedling users. Okay. Yes. Uh, Lois, uh, when, you, when you look at the Kenyan farmers, yeah, uh, I mean, how, because one of the issues that came in our discussion earlier on, it's about the information bit of it. How informed are we on the importance of having the right seedling? Uh, and how it impacts our farming journey. Like, are we are we up, are we so much informed, or is it something that is, there is a gap in the market? Okay, I would like to say that uh, for sure there is a gap. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I would like to tell the farmers, they should um, embrace uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Yes, they should em embrace the technology so that they can be able to get the information from there. In the technology. Uh, there are so many things in the internet so they will be able to get the to know the market trades they'll be able to know how to take care of the uh, crops yeah and other thing they will be able to to find their potential clients there mm -hmm. yeah wow technology is a game changer they they call it a uh, youtube university now you can go on facebook in fact you guys are, are very big on facebook yeah uh but lamin Talk to me, why is the right seedling important when it comes to farming? Uh, thank you. Uh, when it comes to seedling, that is the foundation of any produce you find in the market. Mm -hmm. So, begin with the wrong seedling, get the wrong produce. It affects in, in almost all aspects. Let's say almost all. Uh, reason being, when you have a seedling that is sickly so survival chances are very low mm -hmm. when you start with a seedling that is wrong so you have a market for 
tomatoes and you plant cabbages mm -hmm. are you going to harvest tomatoes <laughs> no no you won't mm -hmm. when you start with a seedling uh, that has no vigor so when it comes to prolificacy will be very very low mm -hmm. so the yields will be low okay so it affects in all aspects okay. and by the way farming is all about the right choices mm -hmm. the right choice that it starts with the seedling okay yes definitely uh, you know some people uh, they don't wait for the seedling beat they they go for the seed themselves they uh, say hello is me nataka hiyo mbegu mimi mwenyewe nijipandie yeah and sometimes people want to you know grow their own seedlings uh, is there a challenge with that what mistakes do we make especially for those of us who want to grow our own seedlings and don't want to come to mkulima seedlings for for seedlings okay what i would like to say mm -hmm. is that um uh, for the seedlings mm -hmm. they uh, you are supposed to buy a seedling because it has already grown mm -hmm. it is uh, it is free from diseases it is free from pest so you will be able to get a healthy plant rather than planting yourself maybe they will fail because the traditional method of the nursery that th that is the one that uh, most farmers do because mm -hmm. um, i think raising seedlings is a bit costly so for your own kitchen garden it is wise you come for the seedlings mm -hmm. uh, rather than planting yours because it will take more it will be a bit expensive to take care of them mm -hmm. and also the percentage the percentage um will be a bit low okay. compared to the ones that we are we are doing them on the no, trees that's, that's interesting raising seedlings is a bit expensive expound on that how so okay so the technology we are using right now mm -hmm. it's a new technology mm -hmm. we are using the planting trays and the soilless media okay. as you can see that one uh, that is tomato uh -huh. For you to raise that tomato, you need to have the soil, the mm -hmm. soilless media we do buy. Yes. The trays, you will buy the trays. Okay. Also the seeds. And not only a seed, mm -hmm. a certified seed. Okay. When you compare a certified seed and a local seed, a certified seed is a bit expensive. Mm -hmm. So that's why it makes it uh, a bit expensive to do it. But if you are buying them from a propagator, mm -hmm. Uh, for instance, for the skumas, we do sell at two shillings. Mm -hmm. So, doing your calculation, it is wise you buy the 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 the, the, tom the skumas mm -hmm. than going for the seeds, which maybe will not even germinate. Definitely, yeah. that's very very important. Uh, I know here, uh, Mr. Lamek, uh, you you have demonstrated, and even we were chatting uh, off air before we came, and I was asking you. Can people make mistakes when they are trying to, to, I mean, if I get my own trees and just put seeds, um, isn't that me finding seedlings? But you told me you have to be very specific in the soil. Uh, expound on that. Oh, thank you. Uh, when you're planting your seedlings, mm -hmm. you have to be very, very particular in the media that you're using. Mm -hmm. For instance, this one is grow pit okay that we are using mm -hmm. grow pit is very very articulate in each aspect let's say drainage uh, pest and disease free it has no insects it does not have any diseases mm -hmm. it has the right uh, tilth so you don't have to work so hard in attaining the tilth that the the, the grow media the grow pit media has mm -hmm. remember uh, the traditional way uh, was that you choose a secluded corner mm -hmm. you plant your seeds that one nowadays we usually I usually tell farmers that you are going at a barrio mm -hmm. that's a barrio mm -hmm. because similarly you are going to dig some hole plant and now plant the seeds mm -hmm. remember you will be mourning in a few days <laughs> because when you when that place is infected with diseases yes you're going to transfer all those diseases to every corner of the farm even the one that, that didn't have mm -hmm. when a farmer borrows some of the seedlings from that traditional way you take to several farms mm -hmm. or some people sell when they are on the ground to several farmers across kenya yes that one we are looking at a tragedy that is unfolding mm -hmm.
Because if you have bacterial wilt, it's very a nuisance to farmers. So if you have bacterial wilt from farm in Moranga, mm -hmm. you're going to transfer bacterial wilt to all farms all over Kenya. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very, very uh, uh, correct when you are choosing the media of planting the seeds okay. so that you can avert the future and possibilities of having uh, your soils infected and your soils affected because eventually you will un be unable to plant your your tomatoes oh. bacterial wilt usually makes your tomatoes die mm -hmm. so and they usually don't die when you have planted it when they have started now you have spent your money inside yes. so when they are flowering that's when it dies so oh. it makes sure that you have used a lot of your money your input money there so it dies when now you have used a lot of it before you go for the burial yes, as you say yes. very very dangerous so I, I, it's good to demonstrate this thing yes. because you're saying this is the new way of doing things yes. medium essentially uh, my mic was a little bit uh, dropping um, I don't know whether it's better it's better we can do it from here yeah, yeah. you guys come come just with me um, I love this these are the seedlings and you're saying this is the new way of doing it yes, yes. so this is this is the lois you call this the planting tree yes, yes. uh-huh so we we want to open uh, first of all mm -hmm. this is something that uh you can you do you guys empower farmers to do this by themselves or you do it for them yes we do mm -hmm. but you have to be in a group mm -hmm. so that we can now reach people when they are together okay rather than having one farmer two farmers mm -hmm. uh, and we usually encourage cooperatives mm -hmm. and apex bodies are usually good because mm -hmm. you pull your people together and make use of our resource okay that is information mm -hmm. you'll make good use of it when it is a uh, cheaper okay compared to one person okay yes. beautiful yes. all right so uh lois uh, I've, I've, I'm part of that group <laughs> that Lamek says mm -hmm. we've decided now we've gotten this. How, mm -hmm. how do we start? This is, you call this the? The grow pit. Mm -hmm. This is grow pit. Okay. So, so you, mm -hmm. you fill the grow pit in that tree. Mm -hmm. You make sure that uh, every hole has gotten. Okay. So what's the components of, of this uh, grow pit? I mean, uh, this component. So the grow pit mm -hmm. is a, a soilless medium. This is not soil. This is not normal soil. Okay. So these are crushed uh, plant materials. Mm -hmm. Plants that uh, usually don't have uh, any disease in them mm -hmm. and that are rare. Yes. And don't decompose easily. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are crushed. Yes. They are washed. Mm -hmm. And uh, to ensure the grains are of good size so mm -hmm. that the seed has a good aeration okay. so grow pit uh, usually has all of that mm -hmm. the other thing to look is the starter nutrients okay. grow pit has starter nutrients okay when you have planted your seeds they are going to need some nutrients okay. so that they can grow okay. very well into a healthy seedling like the one you can see all so right. it has to have some starter nutrients mm -hmm. Uh, the pH has to be very correct. Mm -hmm. The AC has to be very correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what to look for okay. when you're using a medium. Oh, so, so what what I'm getting is yes. using you know people see these trays and automatically soil comes to mind. Yes, and like, then you mm -hmm. fail. You are bound to fail. Yes, <laughs> you are bound to go for a barrier as you yeah, put it. Yes. Yeah. So you, once you establish this, mm -hmm. every every hole has gotten. Uh, it's it's fair percentage. Now, do we have some seedlings here? Some uh, seeds now. You uh, some buy seeds some rather. seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, you buy some seeds. Okay. For instance, tomato seeds are very tiny. Yes. So you are going to poke some hole and add your seed, then cover with some soil. Mm -hmm. That's it. Very light. That's it. That's it. So you do it for for all the, the hole, other holes, uh, depending on the seed yes. blends that you want at yes. the end of the day. Yes. For instance, all these seeds you can see, mm -hmm. they underwent that process okay yes uh, mm. then these ones mm. have you, do you place it in a specific condition yes. um or it's something i can do at the backyard of uh, my home that uh, becomes very uh easily so lois uh, can i just put this uh leave it at the backyard of my house and uh they grow as long as they have they're in the proper medium <laughs> Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, when we do the planting, yes. the, the the sowing, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Yeah, it's called sewing. Okay. When we sew them, there is a special room. Mm -hmm. We normally put them. Mm -hmm. It's a germination room. Okay. Then after three days, we transfer them to a greenhouse. Okay. A greenhouse is a setup where you are able to control everything, the temperature, mm -hmm. the humidity, because different uh, crops mm -hmm. need different temperatures and the humidity. Okay. Yeah. So that makes it a little bit difficult to, to do it as an individual because imagine you, you don't have that environment to be able to, to control mm -hmm. how this seed is germinating. Uh, so, uh, again, I just have to come back to, <laughs> to Kulima. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to the days that we started, uh, we started wrongly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a journey that we have invested in learning a lot of research. Mm -hmm. Because I remember the first seeds, we are actually very discouraged. Mm -hmm. My colleague here can attest that uh, we did some seeds for a client. And the client was very mad with us because we we had the trays, we had the wrong soil, we have the right seeds, we have the right atmosphere, we had the greenhouse, mm -hmm. but we didn't have uh, the right media. Mm -hmm. So, and also we didn't have the, the right expertise. Okay. That begins with the baby steps that we are having. Mm -hmm. So, we... We, we we are able to surpass that because of research. Mm -hmm. uh, the seed is very delicate. Mm. So once it has germinated and you don't give it the right condition, mm -hmm. it eventually dies. Okay. So most of those seed, seeds that we did for our client, I remember he's a winner, but he's our client right now. Mm -hmm. So we were able to rectify our, our mistake and now be able to be on the right track. Okay. So once you, you have given it the right condition, mm -hmm. And that one begs you to be very, uh, very have a lot of time to learn. Mm -hmm. You learn each step, each mistake that you have uh, made. You rectify it uh, faster. Mm -hmm. So if it passes, you are bound to lose your seeds, your media, and everything. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Lois, uh, if now you've you've gotten an order, yeah, you've planted, you've placed it in the right environment, they have grown. Uh, First of all, do you plant and order always these seedlings or can they stay as long as possible uh, in, in these trays? Okay, so there are, the, there are some seeds that we plant for any farmer who is maybe ready. Mm -hmm. The one who maybe he has done the plowing, he has prepared the, the land and um, he's ready to take the seedlings to the farm. Mm -hmm. Also, we do give opportunity to those farmers who they have the right seeds mm -hmm. or they have seeds of their uh, choice. Mm -hmm. uh, they do bring their seeds. We do propagation for them. Okay. But they must be certified seeds. Because mm -hmm. uh, certified seed means that uh, that seed, mm -hmm. uh, it has uh, good traits. Yes. Yeah, the traits of germination, you know. So if they bring local local seeds mm -hmm. they are likely to have uh, poor traits okay. and uh, you will find maybe the germination is uh, poor mm -hmm. so that's why we encourage them to bring the certified seeds okay yeah uh, is is that a challenge the the seed beat in terms of getting certified seeds for majority of farmers um is it an area that you guys also offer uh, advisory places to get proper ones or some people insist this is what i want <laughs> um, uh, so uh -huh. the, uh, we got have uh, so many companies we work with okay uh, who who sells to us uh, uh, certified seeds okay yeah so when a client comes first of all we ask them where they are from we get the right seeds for that climate and the specific place mm -hmm. yeah then we advise them on buying the certified seeds mm -hmm. uh, reason being Right now, mm -hmm. uh, agriculture has really exploded in a different way. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the ones who are using the technology the right way, mm -hmm. they are able to increase their profit margins. Yes. So that's why we give them the right information. Mm -hmm. We tell them when you buy the certified seeds, 
you will see the results mm. for sure you will see the results Definitely. but for the local seeds mm. we'll tell you you will you will struggle mm -hmm. for sure you will struggle yeah yeah and yeah. you don't want to struggle yeah especially yeah. with uh this kind of technology that is being utilized uh is there a way lamek mm -hmm. that um you have to be specific especially now transferring uh seedlings into into farm mm -hmm. is there a right way and a wrong way of, of doing it or it's pretty simple yes yes uh, first you have to prepare uh, your farm mm -hmm. because a seedling requires some uh, a little pampering mm -hmm. because remember they are they are it is called a nursery extra care that is you have baby nurseries for humans eh? that is where the baby is taken care of with a, a few extra cushion mm -hmm. so for the seedling you prepare a nursery bed mm -hmm. so you are going to plant your seeds directly when they are of the right size okay. they have uh, three to five le true leaves mm -hmm. so these are the true leaves that mm -hmm. we see mm -hmm. these are false leaves okay. this is the one that uh, after germination they were the one that came out first okay. so they have to uh, have the right root mass mm -hmm. this is the root mass okay. an advantage of uh, using the tray one is because all the the, the roots are all are, are not uh, injured when you are a uh, protein mm -hmm. so all of them are very intact okay. so for instance this seedling can travel a uh, very many kilometers without dying Mm -hmm. simply because it has the right the, ro the roots are together mm -hmm. it is well hardened for instance you can see i can fold it yes this way mm -hmm. so well hardened seedling is one key mm -hmm. and you see it can't do anything okay so the other thing is that uh, it has to have uh, the right vigor yes uh, there are some seeds that you may find they are sickly so you should not plant those ones okay. you should maybe give them time to have the right uh, any uh, size or the right uh, vigor that you need mm -hmm. however when you are buying seedlings you are given that opportunity to get the right seed the healthy seed mm -hmm. you choose the one that you are impressive okay you're not just taking anything mm -hmm. remember when a farmer buys the seeds and plants them in the barrier mm -hmm. that we say there yes so after the barrier you are going to plant almost everything so the one that survived the death mm. the one that now resurrected or <laughs> is 50 50 dying or waking yeah up. so uh, that is a disadvantage with them so okay. you are forced to plant what you have mm -hmm. but when you come to the nursery you are going to plant what you want okay so you are choosing the variety you are mm -hmm. choosing uh, the size you're choosing the vigor you're choosing everything nice mm -hmm. now your money you're going to get value for your money i know yes one of the questions people ask especially now that uh, uh we there is the element of gmos these yes, days yes. with the seedlings yes uh in terms of certification mm -hmm. that is properly labeled so mm -hmm. that you know exactly what you're dealing with uh, lois yes come on yeah, the, the issue of gmos and and whatnot can you can you can you tell uh, especially when in a seedling environment um, when you're raising these seedlings do we have gmo seeds and non-gmo seeds a farmer specific on that regard and uh, uh how how do you handle those differences okay as i had said earlier mm -hmm. the seeds that we do get from uh, companies that we work closely with mm -hmm. uh, we got to have the information okay. about the seeds and uh i don't think i have any gmo <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah so yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. first of all mm -hmm. we normally get the we, we consult those people mm -hmm. they tell us everything about the seeds and mm -hmm. uh the traits of the seeds the regions they are they are, they are supposed to do well mm -hmm. so that's where we get information then uh, we also have uh, a farms that we do our demos mm -hmm. so first of all we do our demos then uh, we introduce it to the farmers okay yeah definitely uh one one of the issues that uh you've mentioned especially when it comes to taking care of the siblings apart from being the right environment uh you have to have the proper nutrients yes. uh, to add to the nutrients are partly here and are partly additives Added. as you take care of those yes, yes. Uh, talk to me about those nutrients uh, 
Uh, for instance, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we usually uh, provide some nutrients. Mm -hmm. So, Seed Pro Africa Limited uh, usually mm -hmm. does the nutritional part. Okay. Uh, she manages the seedling part, I manage the nutritional part. Mm -hmm. So, we have interacted with the crops for a while. So, we have learned the niche and how well to take care of their nutrients needs. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, uh, when a seedling is small, when a seed needs to germinate, in the grow pit, you usually put the germinator nutrient. Mm -hmm. Then from there, we have a takeoff nutrient. Mm -hmm. That's all. We have the starter nutrients mm -hmm. that we usually we manufacture ourselves. So we have a high phosphorus. Mm -hmm. High phosphorus uh, nutrition usually offers a room for the root development. Mm -hmm. So a uh, high phosphorus is uh, responsible for the proper root, as you can see. Yes. Then from there, we go to the second stage, that is the leafy or vegetative stage. Mm -hmm. We have a, a high uh, nitrogen, mm -hmm. that is sugar, go, sh sugar grow, high uh, nitrogen. That one is added to now start now feeding the, you know, now the, the seed now is asking for more nutrients. Yes. So when you add the high nitrogen, mm -hmm. it is going to have the right size of the stem, mm -hmm. the right size of the leaves and the right size of branches that are forming. Mm -hmm. So from the other stage now, after now uh, transplanting, you go to the third one. Mm -hmm. That one we are going to add a high potassium. Mm -hmm. A high potassium is added to uh, cater for the fruits, fruit size, fruit shape, uh, fruit uh, quality, all that. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually have the sure grow high potassium okay so high potassium uh, potassium is usually usually referred to as the fruit uh, quality sheriff mm -hmm. because without potassium you are bound to have everything wrong mm -hmm. you have some fruits that require uh, a good size of uh, potassium mm -hmm. uh, failure to which their skins will be very uh, they call it uji mm -hmm. so it will not be very turgid Mm -hmm. So the quality of the skin will be very poor. Mm -hmm. So once the tomato is ready, you eat it that same day or not. Okay. So it will affect the shelf life of the fruits. Right. We also have calcium, yes. which, one, which is also added. Mm -hmm. uh, it prevents uh, some diseases, let's say blossom and rot. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, it usually helps the, to, to have the cells together. So you have a very, sometimes you may come across some... Uh, tomatoes that w you you bought all of them at the same time but one and, and they looked almost similar but there is one that has started now uh, puncturing and the other one is still good mm. so uh, what varies there is the amount of calcium that was there mm. yes so essentially it's it's like a child yes if you feed a child right yes. then they grow up strong and if you don't mm. those as they grow it will show yeah. that through stunted growth yeah. all this maybe become sickly yeah. oh, it's, which is very very interesting yeah. uh, i mean lois uh, just looking at at the way uh, now the way you started your business and the way the business has grown over time um how much demand are we seeing um how how much of farmers are calling you now we need to be empowered on this issue of of proper seedlings, certified seedlings, and just making sure that they are doing right. Has that interest grown over the years that you've operated? Yeah, for sure it has grown. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look back uh, where we started, mm -hmm. there is a change. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started with a small greenhouse. Then uh, after we, uh, we were able to rectify everything, quality, the, the seedlings and everything, mm -hmm. We were able to increase our greenhouses, and uh, right now I can say we got have uh, three branches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we want to reach each and every cla uh, farmer mm -hmm. wherever they are, so that so so that you can co cut the cost, the transportation cost. Mm -hmm. So at least right now we've been able to rise in a in a in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how much demand? How many seedlings are you selling a month? A month we are selling approximately uh, 
500,000 seedlings. Half a million? Yeah. Yes. Every month? Yes. Wow. I'm starting to make a lot of maths, my brother. <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> you should stop. Yeah, you should stop yes. making those maths. Yeah, Th someone but is watching somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as we come to a close, because mm -hmm. I know now we have talked about proper seedling management, uh, the way you're supposed to do it right, uh, having certified seeds. Um, now we are talking uh, about sustainability, mm -hmm. yeah, sustainable production. And we're chatting about even the input. People are very sensitive. Yes. These days is farm to plate. Mm -hmm. I want to eat something that was organically produced mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, you also have some innovation around that in regards to manure. You know, mm -hmm. we've had uh, issues with fertilizer yes, yes. in the country of late. Yeah. Yes. Um, you're innovating in that regard. Talk to me about that. Yes, uh uh, we recently began uh, doing fertilizers and uh, as I told you that anything that I do I usually offer a solution. I'm targeting a certain problem. Mm -hmm. So remember we had had some issues of fertilizers going up to 9,050 uh, kg bag. Mm -hmm. So something like that. Eh? <laughs> However, I, as I was doing my research uh, remember my research is mostly I usually go to China with the bundles mm -hmm. with the MBs I go to China there mm -hmm. and come back after they have depleted mm -hmm. I go to other developed nations mm -hmm. I do a lot of research that is through the internet mm -hmm. so uh, when I was in the internet I came across some uh, new technologies that are not present here in Kenya mm -hmm. so we started practicing them and uh, we got certified Mm -hmm. So the new fertilizer making uh, process is called organomineral. So organomineral fertilizers begs of the manufacturer to use both organic and synthetic way. Mm -hmm. It is a solution. Uh, it is a, a corrective measure. At the same time, it offers a solution okay. to the nutrients. All right. So you usually use a soil amender okay. as your carrier material okay. when you are using the fertilizer, when you are making the fertilizer. All right. So the advantages of it uh, compared to the synthetic one is that it is very, very friendly to your soil. Mm -hmm. It is very, very uh, efficient to unlocking the nutrients in your soil. Okay. Remember the other one, that uh, the synthetic one. When you are using it, you are using it and uh, it will only provide what you are targeting but not offer other some uh, micro needs that are available mm -hmm. that are needed by the plants okay yes okay no mineral yeah. so that's the new venture yes uh, our, our time is out mm -hmm. i know uh, how do you foresee uptake of this uh, fertilizer that's you know it's trying it's very balanced yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. um how do you project the market for for this new product as we finish uh, for now uh, the, 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 there will be a uh, a uh, positive trajectory yes uh, simply because people are learning that their soils are becoming very toxic okay. and less productive okay. as in pro africa we usually say we grow more with less okay so you need to use less fertilizers and achieve more yields okay yes definitely all right so uh we've come to a close by the way uh, you guys are a couple by the way I almost asked is it very difficult to run a business as as a family or that like she handles the seedlings, you handle division of labor. Because, you know, we're talking about family businesses. And uh, mostly in Kenya, uh, there's normally a challenge mm -hmm. there. I don't know, how, how, how uh, Lois, how do you find balance running a family business and working with a spouse? Okay, so, uh, to start with uh, how we met. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a farmer b uh, before we met. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he was a baker. Yeah, but uh, but before uh -huh. before he became a baker, mm -hmm. he was a farmer. Mm -hmm. But due to some challenges, yes. he wasn't able to do farming at that time. Okay. So when we met, he was like, "What? What? Eh, well, kaim kuliva." So so he used to buy the um, kundes from me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know whether he was interested. Mm. Uh, with the kundes or <laughs> what was the <laughs> yeah so yeah. Uh, one day i went to his bakery mm. and i found a bag 
filled with the kundes. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh my. So, but because I was getting my money, yeah. I didn't ask much. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the interesting pa part is mm -hmm. both of us, we are farmers. Okay. It is not something that I was forced to do. Okay. Or rather, I found it maybe doing right. something that I was interested okay. with. So it was easier to merge and uh, to do business together. Okay. Yeah. A little time, time, time. But we had to finish our stories. Mm -hmm. That's where we actually put a full stop to today's show. Thank you very much. We appreciate uh, Victoria Islamic mm -hmm. and uh, Lois Kabuti from um, Kulima Seedlings and also Seed Pro East Africa. Yeah. Thank you for your input to this show. Uh, that has been of course farm kenya show thank you for joining with us over the past hour and a half my name is noah kipkimboy see you on to the next one bye bye for now <laughs>